In this tutorial, you're going to learn how to make a couple of subtle color changes to turn this photo into this photo. And along the way, we're going to take a look at a very popular way to make color adjustments, but also a not so popular way that I actually think can be more useful in many circumstances, especially when it comes to creative color inside of your photos. All right, my name is Matt Kluskowski. We are here inside of Lightroom Classic. And what we're going to do is look at an image that is not very fun to look at for just a minute, but it's going to help us really see two of the color adjustments and what they're doing. So I'm going to open up my histogram in the top right hand corner of Lightroom and I'm going to turn on the highlight clipping warning. It's that little triangle in the top right corner. So it's going to show you any clipped highlights, meaning any highlights that are getting pushed or are close to being pushed toward all white. Okay. And then what you're going to notice is a, a very interesting and popular way for us to change color is using the white balance settings. We can, we can use temperature to, to turn a photo a little bit more blue. We can use it to turn it a little bit more warm or yellow or green or magenta. That's a pretty popular way to change color or adjust color. Okay. Especially color cast and neutralize it. But when you do this, I want to, I want you to watch what happens to the tones. Take a look at the histogram, take a look at the bright area over here. And as I move this, Look at what it's doing to the photo. Okay. Number one, if you were to just look at the histogram, you can see it's changing tones. I'm not a big histogram person, so that doesn't bother me too much. Um, I don't think the histogram is a good way to determine whether a photo is good or bad. And it mostly comes into play when it comes to print. But in this case here, we can see that we've got some pretty big swings in our our tonal ranges, especially in the highlights, as we start to adjust temperature, even a little bit, not as much when we're adjusting tint, but along the lines there, you can see that we are, we are making some changes there. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is reset those to zero. I'm going to go down to my graduated filter here because we don't actually have this color adjustment in any of the panels. Okay. There's no, no, this color adjustment doesn't exist in the panels, but what we can do is go to our graduated filter, scroll all the way down to the bottom here, which is the color option. And we can click on the little color swatch and we can pick a color inside of there. And then what we can do is just, if we want to apply it to the whole photo, even though it's a graduated filter, all we have to do is drag it outside of the boundaries of the photo. And you can see it's applied it to that whole image there. Okay. But look at what happened. Nothing changed inside of the total ranges. And if I turn this off and then on, you can see really very little change inside of our histogram as well. So we're not really messing with the tones of the photo all that much. And if I come in here and I adjust this color, even the saturation of it or the different colors, you can see that that little highlight clipping area isn't moving at all. All right. So, so nothing we're doing in here is affecting any of the tones of the photos, meaning the highlights and the shadows and the overall brightness and exposure. So nothing we're doing here is affecting all of that. Well, that's the difference between those two adjustments. It doesn't mean one is necessarily better than the other. You just get very different adjustments with them. And there are times where I use temperature and tint plenty to adjust color. But in this case, we're going to go jump over to this photo. I'm going to turn off my clipping warning. And just to show you, if I wanted to warm the photo, I could do it. I could give it a very, you know, warmer type feel, especially because we're looking into the sun. It should have a warmer feel to it. So I can definitely do that or give it a colder uh, type of a feel there as well. So I can make those adjustments. And I, again, I'm not saying that they're bad, but I want to throw out a different way to do it that I think can be very creative and give you, you know, a lot of people don't know about it really gives you some good results. So let's close our histogram. Just taking up space up here. We don't really need it and hop over to our graduated filter. By the way, all of those of you that are wondering about um, any HSL hue saturation changes, I'll talk about that after I show this example here because I don't feel that that falls into the same category as this. But now that we have our graduated filter active, I come down here to my color section inside of there. I go over here just like I did before. Now I can choose a color. Uh, up and down is the intensity of the color, left, to right is the actual color. So we'll go here and, and settle on a, a reddish orange color here. 
and then I'll take my graduated filter and I'll just apply this part to the sky and we'll talk about that in just a second as well. So I'll just drag it downward here and look at the color that I get in the sky. I would have a really difficult time getting that color using my white balance adjustments. I'm not saying it's impossible and I'm not saying again, better or worse, but I like this. This has a, this has a real kind of summery faded sunset type of a look to me. Okay. It's not just warmer. It's a little bit more. It's got a little bit more in those red tones as well. We're able to, we're able to get colors that we just simply wouldn't be able to with that white balance. Now, really quick, before we move on to a couple of ways to change this, a very quick word from our sponsor, which is always me. I, uh, If you are watching this, and we are, of course, inside of Lightroom right now, um, if you're watching this and you need to brush up on any areas of Lightroom or you want a good, easy way to add some roadmap for learning Lightroom from start to finish, I hope you will check out my Lightroom system at mattk.com slash Lightroom system. It has got everything from beginner to advanced inside of Lightroom. You can download it to your computer to watch it directly, or you have an option to stream it online. You actually get both when you purchase. So hope you'll swing by and check out the website. Now I could drag this outside the boundaries of the photo and it essentially do what we did before. It just applies it to the entire image. Um, like we did in that gradient example, where I just dragged it outside the boundaries there. So we could do that if we wanted to, but more times than not, what I find is I'll want a certain adjustment on part of the photo. And while I want to make an adjustment to the bottom, because to me, this just looks weird to have it, you know, to have these two color temperatures battling in the photo. What I would do is go to the bottom and add a whole nother one and then just drag upward to the bottom. But now the nice thing about this is, is I can come back and I can control it. So I don't want it to be quite as orange because I want a little bit more of that, the blueness in the water to show through. So I want slightly, slightly less of a color tint in the water there. I don't want it to be as strong, but I don't want it to necessarily be as opposing as it was before where we had, you know, red, orange up top and blue at the bottom. Okay. Again, this is all personal taste. You may want the whole photo to be like that. You may want to use more or less of any adjustment, but I think the idea is, is now when we're using these adjustments, we can split them up between different parts of the photo. So if you look at the before, it's about where we started with, and then our after, I think it gives the photo a very nice color temperature to it. And, and color is really one of the driving forces in our photography when it comes to eliciting something from somebody. Now, no, a lot of people also will throw out the question of, all right, well, what about saturation or HSL, mostly HSL down here in our hue, saturation, luminance? Because remember, I'm not talking about enhancing color. I'm talking about changing color with these adjustments. And then, you know, between white balance and what we saw, those are the ways to change color. There's re this really doesn't have anything to do with changing color. This is taking the intensity of existing colors between saturation and luminance and changing them. But even with hue, we're, we're limited in how far and how much we can change these colors. And that's, that's why I really covered those other two methods, because those are going to be the most control if you wanted to uh, significantly shift your colors. And yes, we do have hue as well inside of our graduated filter and the other adjustments. But again, you're going to be limited in how far you can push this. Last thing I'll cover is just a couple of quick tips for this color adjustment because I realize it, it might be new to some of you. Not everybody, not everybody makes it all the way down to the bottom of this panel to even see that. But when you click on it, a couple of a uh, couple of different things that we can do here. Number one, you'll see if you hold down your Option or Alt key, uh, you can see it switches to a little grabber hand, and we can just you know change how this looks to us. It's not necessarily changing the way it works; it's just changing what the far right and left side. Uh, will show inside of here. The other thing that we can do is we can click and move this point around, but there's another trick that you can click inside of here. Don't let up on your mouse and you have to start by clicking inside of here first inside of this, this little uh, swatch area. You can click inside of here with your mouse still pressed down, move your cursor outside, and now you can start to pick different colors from your photo. Not so much in this photo because we've already applied color to it. So we're just picking up the same color. But if you had a photo where you wanted to maybe match the tint of the top or the bottom or a certain part of the photo to another part of the photo, again, just click inside of here, keep your mouse pressed down and just drag out. And you'll see as you drag it around the photo there, you'll see that little dot where the color is. You'll see it starts jumping 
around inside of there. And that is a good quick way to pick a color from your photo. Last thing would be, let's go ahead and get this back up to where I wanted it. The last thing would be if you ever want to just reset it to nothing rather than opening up the color swatch and then just go dragging it down and resetting it to nothing. Uh, the same little shortcut that really works for any setting inside of Lightroom is double clicking the name of the setting will always reset it to zero. So if I had adjusted exposure, if I double click the word exposure, it resets it to zero. In the case of color, if I double click the word color, it will reset that color swatch to nothing. So it's as if we weren't applying anything and it's just an easier way to get in there and set it back to its default setting.